GPS says I'm about uh, five minutes or so from Owl's Farm. Beautiful country, eastern Ohio. Rolling hills, lots of places for these big bucks to hide. And I'm getting pretty pumped to see his setup there. So, be there in a few minutes and I'll check back in with you guys. Got another field, easy access. That other field just right there, but it's two different movement zones and two different wind directions. So it's probably hard to see on the video, but you can tell the from how we drove in. But Stonehenge, with the wind coming this direction, or really this direction, it's pretty darn good. The wind going that direction, this field's a whole lot better. Um, so, I can see that alfalfa nip. Yeah, and we got to figure out what these are. These are yeah. getting hammered. If anybody knows, <laughs> just goes to show you. If anybody knows, look at the alfalfa really getting hammered. Though. Sure is. You know, I know it's because I look at. So this little, look at, look at how that's getting ate, boy. They're in here. Pounding it. Again, I mean, same as like I was saying earlier, uh, I wish the heck I had cameras up. I, I normally have a camera on that post, uh, which by the way, if cows ever get on your property like those posts do, <laughs> they'll knock it all over. But uh, I had a little, a little trouble with that. But again, I mean, if you would have asked me if rye was in here, I'd have told you there's no, no. We, we tried it, it didn't work. And to see the rye growing up as good as it's doing, I'm, um, I'm impressed. I will say one thing about this, and maybe more of a pessimistic view. This plot looks pretty darn good. I think most of us would agree. Oh, absolutely. I mean, you could definitely find prettier, but it looks pretty darn good. And uh, you can identify a lot of different clovers in here, whites and arrow leaf and uh, alfalfa and stuff, the chicories are in here. But You don't even have to get down to see the browsing in here. And you know what? That's a good point, right? So before I go on to mine, so this is about an acre. It, it drops off on that edge, so it's a little bit. It's it's roughly. I, I like to estimate it, which I should know exactly, but it's seventy point seven five to an acre. Okay. A nice little opening opening in timber country. You got a box pine tucked up here. But what I like to show people is just because a field looks like this doesn't excuse me for not taking a soil test. It's a good point. Is you can look at, I mean, it's like a McDonald's cheeseburger looks really good, but is it as, as nutritious as a backstrap? <laughs> right? I mean, you, there you, you go. can't just go, you can't judge a book by a cover. How many cliches can we come up with? Probably a lot. But basically what I'm going to show you is like, just because a field looks really good, 
Um, and it all goes, I talk about goals so much, I get tired of hearing myself, but it's your, go, uh, your goals and your budget. But if you have the money to do a, fifth, depending on where you go, 7 to $15 soil test, do it. Because this field, when you do the soil test, very might be low on a specific nutrient. Or you spend $15 to say, huh, I'm happy I'm not going to spend 30 on lime or 50 on lime or 100 on lime, whatever it is, 1,000 on lime, it doesn't matter. Um, the point is, is just because something looks good doesn't always tell you all the facts. So in this particular field, um, I mean, I'm pretty tickled with it. There is a little bit of uh, sedge grass. That stuff's pretty tough. You ever seen this before, Bruce? Yes. Uh, I've seen this in a lot of fields. I've actually seen deer eat it before. But I've always been told if deer are eating that, you're in trouble. And, uh, you know, we've, we've tried to, again, our, our goal here at this farm, we don't have enough time to manage the herd like I wish, wish I could. You know, I wish I was retired and didn't have to work. But uh, <laughs> so, so for us, our goals are to see a lot of deer, to harvest a few deer, and to chase big deer. In three bullet points, that's, I mean, that's our goal. Well, what's going to give us the best opportunity for that? Well, clover, chicory, alfalfa, overseed with rye grain, overseed with brassicas, gives us a pretty good balance of food. Um, it gives us a pretty good opportunity to hold a good number of deer because you're not going to run out of food. And then, of course, you know, there's good nutrients in it that hopefully if a deer matures, you'll be able to chase a, a big deer. So we don't have enough time to say oh we can't plan enough we're just going to hammer does um, and shoot 30 of them a year or whatever you would need to do to balance that out we just don't have it so for us it's more important about adding high quality tonnage to where the deer can continue to eat right right versus um, planting something is like i call it like a candy crop that is just going to be to a hunt over because like you i don't have the open area where I can plant a five or 10 acre field. I just don't have it. And I don't have neighbors that have big ag fields that, I can, that, that I'm just adding supplement to. So it all goes by your region. But you can do this, I mean, anywhere but maybe, you know, a, a real uh, dry climate. You can, you can produce pretty good food plots. I'm just a regular dude who has learned a little bit about it. And I mean, I think this looks pretty darn good. It's more than darn good.